A long time ago, Ruahatu, god of the sea, gave Polynesia a wonderful treasure, gold and silver colored fish. Long before Captain Cook discovered the islands, there were many famines in Polynesia until the day that man, inspired by Ruahatu, thought of building fish traps. A sacred chant of Wahine, the island of the spirits, tells the story. Once, a man who had nothing, not even enough to feed his family, was on the verge of total despair. He remembered the traps he had inherited from his ancestors, old traps made of stone, too old to be of any use. He looked at all the traps and saw waves of gold and silver colors. There were a hundred fish caught in the traps. He understood Ruahatu, the sea god's message, and left to tell everyone that no man must ever destroy the traps, but keep them, because they were there to save man from famine. a vast storage house where anyone could help himself. Here in Waine, in the Societe Archipelago, six traps are still active today. Only three families continue to use them. But the arms of the sea where they were built have much fewer fish than they did in the past. The biggest fish traps in Polynesia are in Tuamotu, on the Tikahau Atoll in the Tueva Pass, also called the Manta Ray Pass. This 26 kilometer long atoll's particularity is that it has only one opening onto the sea. Today, wire netting has replaced the blocks of coral which once acted as barriers. Although in the past the traps were used by the entire village, they are now family businesses. The traps, or fish enclosures, house a multitude of different kinds of fish, and other things as well, since the Polynesians believe that the sea contains mysterious creatures and invisible spirits which haunt the ocean depths. Ivan Vivi is a Polynesian fisherman. He and his brother Marcel go to the Tueva Pass to inspect the enclosures which face the Pacific Ocean. Like every morning, they eliminate the hidden dangers. There are numerous accidents due to sharks, and many fishermen bear the scars of these encounters. Before going into the trap, Ivan observes the shark from the outside for safety's sake. He still recalls the morning that he and his father, Teroro Natua, discovered two five meter long tiger sharks caught in the trap. It took a lot of courage for his father to enter the enclosure and kill them. Ivan will never forget his late father's heroic victory, which made him a legend among fishermen. Ivan knows this type of small reef shark, which is often found in the enclosures. This one has tough skin. Ivan will make it out, but with a new scar. The 
The greatest danger, however, are the stonefish, whose dorsal fins contain an extremely violent and deadly poison. They are almost invisible, but Ivan knows how to spot them. The design of the traps has hardly changed since they were first used. Two long V-shaped arms guide the fish into a first chamber, whose opening is fairly large and extends into a second chamber, which has a smaller opening. The size of the openings is a jealously guarded secret. The final room is the reserve, from where the men actually take the fish. After cleaning the enclosures, Ivan harpoons a tuna and a few surgeon fish for his team's breakfast. Frigate bird, the team mascot, shares in the feast. The fisherman's village of Vaimeho is at the edge of the Tueva Pass. It contains three or four families of fishermen who use the 15 traps. <laughs> Today is Sunday. Ivan's wife and children, who live in the village of Tuerahera on the other side of the lagoon, have come for the weekend. While his wife prepares the fish for breakfast, Ivan cuts the small cords which are used to attach the fish so they can be sold in the market. Three times a week, Ivan and his team of four fishermen, all friends or members of his family, take fish from the traps to sell at the Papit market in Tahiti. For this, they use a large net, which they are constantly repairing. The men share the same passion for surfing. The second most valuable aspect of Tikahau are the waves. Each time he checks the traps in the morning, Ivan looks at the waves of the pass, and even if they're not very big, he still enjoys surfing them. The men are fortunate enough to be able to combine work with pleasure on the same side. This morning, the fishermen are going to take the fish out of one of their five traps. Ivan has chosen this metal basket trap, more manageable than the big net because there's a heavy current in the pass today. While Ivan positions the basket, the others, who swim like fish themselves, beat the water to push the fish inside. Fish get caught in the traps at night when they come to spawn or to find nourishment in the lagoon. There are parrotfish, carong, surgeonfish, canebeakfish, and many others. 
This time, market orders are not very great, and it takes barely an hour to load the boat. Back in the village, the men sort the fish and then string them together according to species. They call this making packets. Here, goods are counted not by kilogram, but by packets, a Polynesian unit of measure corresponding to a cluster of fish. The quality of Tuheva Pass fish lies in the fact that they do not have ciguatera, an extremely dangerous disease for man which some fish on the reef can transmit. Finally, the fishermen have to ship the fish to the village of Tuherahera on the other side of the atoll, a 30-minute outboard trip. Ivan and his team take several hundred kilograms of fish out of the traps every week. This small industry provides for about 20 people, parents, wives, and children of fishermen. Like every Wednesday, their families help put the fish into the cold room that the mayor of Tikahau has made available to them. After a night in the cold room, the fish are flown to the Papit market in Tahiti. Sophie Lee Tam, one of Ivan's wholesalers, picks up the freight at Papit Airport. She and her mother have one of the biggest stalls in the market. Fish is the basis of the Polynesian diet, and Thursday is the big fish market day. All sorts of fish are sold, tuna, swordfish, Caron, parrotfish, and dozens of other species. In Ivan's father's time, there wasn't much fresh fish in the Papit market. Fish were frozen aboard schooners which went from island to island until they arrived in Tahiti two weeks later. 